WCNC Charlotte. This is Flashpoint, where power and politics collide and the tough questions get asked and answered. Thanks for joining us here on Flashpoint. I'm Ben Thompson. Election Day now just days away. In towns and cities across the Carolinas, folks will be voting for mayor, city councilmen, even aldermen in some cases. Yep. What you need to know before you hit the polls coming up a little bit later in the show. But first, this week, we got an update on what's called the Transformational Mobility Plan, basically the regional game plan for making transportation around this growing city somewhat tolerable. Here's a look at the rail and busing phasing that we're expected to see over the next couple of decades. Yes, I said decades. This unveiled at this past week's city council retreat, paid for perhaps what you see here, this transit plan, at least perhaps by a one cent sales tax. Expansion of bus transit would come first. The Envision My Ride program would be complete by 2026. That's going to allow new routes and faster pickup times for buses, a whole reimagining of how we uh, sort of run our bus system. But when it comes to the rails, you're going to have to wait a lot longer. The red line, 2033, uh, phase three of the gold line, 2034, silver line, 2035, and then 2039 for the second phase of it. Perhaps a blue line extension to Valentine, not until 2041. We are talking 20 years away. Joining us today, Charlotte Mayor Pro Tem Julie Eisel. She chairs the Transportation and Planning Committee. Mayor Pro Tem, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Ben. Glad to be here. Um, okay, it strikes me that that when it comes to this issue of transportation here in Charlotte and, and the greater region, I, I honestly think if you could snap your fingers and have all these things in place in the next year, almost everybody would be on board, even if they are expensive. The problem I think that you all know and you're running into is that this, this is decades in the making and decades planning in advance. And if we've seen anything in the last year and a half, it's that a lot can change. A lot can change in a city like Charlotte um, in the way we commute, in the way we work. Um, how are you guys approaching this knowing that this is a bit of a moving target with all of these various projects? So I, I think it's, you know, we're, we're approaching it pretty methodically um, yesterday or Tuesday was really at the retreat, the opportunity for the council to hear from the Charlotte um, Regional Business Alliance and to hear from the Central Line Council of Government on their approach, um, what they've been doing with the Connect Beyond Committee and the work that Connect Beyond has been has done with, I think it's 11 different counties. And so it's, it's very organic and very methodical. We, the most important thing is to get everything out on the table, first and foremost, as to what the impacted towns and, and counties really want out of um, transit and transportation. Transit being the things that move, buses, rail, transportation being the hardscape, if you will, bridges, roads, sidewalks, bus stops. So what kind of buy-in, if any, have you gotten so far um, when it comes to some of those regional uh, partners, other towns, other cities, that sort of thing? And then, of course, y'all have to get signed off from the General Assembly in Raleigh to put something like this um, when it comes to any sort of sales tax or anything like that on a ballot. Yeah, right. I don't, I don't think we're asking for buy-in right now. I think we're trying to give people as much information as possible as to what the what the transformational mobility network is and it's a funding mechanism what it is what it could fund and then listen listen to see what uh, stakeholders want out of this program as well if they're going to be a part of it so that's step one and then step two the buy-in really does come when we know where everybody stands if they're if their needs are being met um, and then we go together to the the general assembly but we know that we can't do this just as charlotte it's got to be a regional effort and hey, talk to us about what this sales tax uh would look like if the general assembly signs off on this what would it look like well what we're asking for is a one percent sales tax and that would pay in the in the short term in the most immediate term which would be 2023, because if it gets approved next year on the ballot, you wouldn't start collecting it till 2023. And in the short term, that would pay for uh, enhancing and expanding our bus system. We have Envision My Ride, which is a reworking of the whole bus network that began in 2018 to really um, focus on our high frequency routes um, and get rid of that sort of hope, uh, hub and spoke approach to buses so that we have sort of mini transit centers 
where people can connect and they don't have to come through uptown. So I, I, I'm a big proponent of let's get at that out in front and tell people what we're going to do with the bus system. With the light rail, um, the silver line or the lead, red line, there's a lot of work to be done still. And so there's there's time for that, right? Because there's a whole fe federal funding process that has to happen. And that's going to be that's going to be years in the making. And, and how, and then, how, how go ahead. I'm sorry, the other piece of that is greenways and sidewalks. That's a big piece of it too. That falls into the transportation category. And the way the proceeds would be split would be 80% transit, 20% transportation. And right now the proposal is that if we can't get approval for the red line for from Norfolk Southern, we could tweak that transportation number because it's really, the towns are, are really interested in transportation. How do they connect sidewalks? How do they get covered lit bus stops? Um, everything that feeds that is necessary, um, greenways, safe greenways, everything that's necessary to feed into the overall transit system. Of, of, the, of the rail lines, which one do you think is the most important? Well, the most probable is the silver line because we were already at the 15% engineering phase that was council approved i think two years ago 50 million dollars that gets us through 15 percent of the the design phase sorry um and that had to be that's really critical because if we're going to be in line for federal funding through the biden administration's package which we're hoping happens then we're in pretty good position because we've gotten that far um and we've hit that milestone already and that's what the the federal funding um really takes into account when they decide who's going to get assistance on that um let me talk about the gold line because i know we reported this past week here on wcnc charlotte that, that the the daily passenger number is about 1200 passengers and it's substantially less like a third less of what the initial projections were um granted i realize we're in the pandemic and things like this but 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 this gold line's now free right now people don't have to pay for it um and I think, think that sort of goes back to my, my first question of, of this is a moving target and, and things and dynamics are changing. Does it concern you at all that more people aren't riding the gold line that's now been uh, sort of accepting passengers in the last couple of months? Well, yeah, I mean, we'd love people to ride the gold line, but they it has to get them where they want to go. And it's sort of like our bus system. It's sort of a chicken and the egg until it's connected into a holistic system, including buses then you know the gold line is a fixed line light rail is a fixed line you can't move it because the population shifts um north south east or west it's fixed and it's in it you've got to have a feeder system that feeds into that like a bus line so until we can build all of that out we've really got to be a little bit patient on that COVID aside but we've got to be patient about that people say well people don't ride the bus unless you have to which is absolutely true but until we invest in that bus system and make it so that people want to ride the bus because they're in a bus rapid transit lane and they're zooming past everybody stuck in traffic, then you know we can't we can't expect that we're going to see increases in in ridership. It's got to it's it's it has to provide a benefit to people. This past week, you all sort of figured out, uh, hammered out how you're going to spend that $60 million from the feds as part of the American Rescue Plan. $17 million is going to go to housing efforts, um, $16 million to workforce development and employment services, another $27 million to, to all sorts of different things, public safety, arts, culture, food and security. I mean, I know the Biden administration on a federal level had said some of this stuff was going to be transformative. Um, you feel pretty good about how this is being allocated? Absolutely. There's still, you know, we, we allocated $10 million to the digital divide. That's not fully baked yet because we committed to working with CMS and the county on a digital divide initiative. And we don't know what that is, but we wanted to, to give approval to staff to set that money aside so that they could continue to work with CMS and the county on what that really means. Does it mean, um, laptops does it mean internet uh, infrastructure does it mean tutor we don't know right now exactly what that's going to look like but some things like um we we approved two million dollars for the ymca for their youth programming in the afternoons they've been doing that um they do a really great job at it and 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 they're stood up and ready to go with that program so some of the programs were ready to go some of them need to be fleshed out a little bit more 
All right, Charlotte Mayor Pro Tem, Julie Eisel. Mayor Pro Tem, thank you as always, we appreciate it. Thanks, Ben. All right, take care.